Hi, I'm Exelia and welcome to my channel. Come in, get comfy and let's chat about cosplay. I read. I'm Heather and welcome back to my channel. This video, in case you missed it, part one will be linked above here. This is part two of my reacting to your cosplay hot takes. You seem to really enjoy the first part of this video. Uh, I will try and make this one a little bit more upbeat because I know it was a bit like <clears throat> at times. This time I'll try my best not to ramble on for as long and hopefully you'll enjoy. Before I get started I just want to say thank you to everyone who has like subscribed, watched, interacted, left a comment, sent me a message etc etc about this channel. I was really nervous about starting this and it's been so much more welcoming than I expected so yeah thanks guys. <laughs> The mug is a lie, this week it is not gin, it is actually Lidl's finest mulled wine. It's not that classy out of a mug, but really I just don't care. Same disclaimer as last time, like, these are just my own opinions, some of these are your opinions, if we disagree that's cool. Let's get started. No makeup is not an option, regardless of your gender. Yeah, I agree with this. I mean, I'm not really gonna be gatekeepery on this because it's not gonna be like, you have to wear makeup. But if you want to wear makeup, it's not built for any specific demographic. Like, it doesn't matter how you identify. If you wanna wear makeup, wear makeup. Any costume can benefit from makeup. Just do a little bit of research, give it a couple of tests, you're good. Semi-related, if you're doing full body paint for a costume, paint your ears. Yeah. Or, you know, I would even go further than that and I would be like, if you're gonna do full body paint, like, put the effort in. Don't just slather some snazzeroo all over yourself and call it a day. Like, try and make it even, try and put some effort into it, do a bit of research. There's tons and tons of tutorials out there. Either don't wear it and just wear your own skin. Totally fine. Cool. You can do that. Or, if you're gonna do it, do it properly. The rise of casual cosplay and the shift away from crafting focused content on Instagram has turned cosplay into a beauty contest just like every other area of IG. Uh, I think this is just kind of natural with cosplay, like there is a very heavy demographic of people who are interested in the actual craft and how you make something and how you are working on something and they love to see progress. But there's a much bigger demographic who only really care about the end result or like selfies or footage from cons, you know, like you actually wearing the finished result. So as frustrating as it is that it's like, well yeah it is kind of now just like a beauty contest. I think that's the same on every platform and if you seek out a community that is more heavily into like crafting and wanting to see progress you can find it it's just a lot smaller than the demographic that just wants to see cosplay you know being tiktok or cosplay famous does not make you an a-list celebrity <laughs> what idiot thinks that <laughs> i agree with the point you're making but i <laughs> I think most people who are gonna assume this sort of thing are gonna be young and naive and the only thing I can say to that is like <laughs> you'll grow out of it and you'll realize that even if you've got like a thousand, ten thousand, fifty thousand people following you online in the real world that means very very little. Don't let the ego go to your head and you know just just be nice. Not everything is cosplay. Sometimes a costume is just a costume. Yeah, it is. You probably do more method acting as Santa Claus than you do as most characters in cosplay. Some people get really funny about being like, oh, well, cosplay is where you embody the character. Like, I rarely embody the characters that I do, but I would still say what I do is cosplay. It's more about the community than what you're physically doing in the costume. It's better to be safe than accurate from making to wearing. The amount of people who take heels off shoes and risk breaking their ankles pains me, or doing stuff that can damage their airways, etc. I've had people get extremely nasty over safety precautions. So have I. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're making something or wearing something, like normal logic and safety goes out of the window. You just don't care about it as long as it looks like the picture. If you're gonna put yourself or anyone else at risk for the sake of cosplay, like just just stop and think about that, okay? A well-sewn cosplay is more impressive to me than one constructed out of foam and warbler. Warbler is meant to be easy to use, sewing isn't. I'm way more impressed to see a handmade, sewn cosplay that's neat with good fabric choices. It's annoying that people who don't make things seem to think that armour should always win over sewn cosplays, as they don't get how difficult sewing can be. Uh... Sewing is not designed to be difficult, I just want to put that out there straight away. 
because it's not designed to be difficult. There are so many more techniques and so many more intricate things within sewing that make it more difficult overall. But I do think that compared to something like foam or warbler, there's only so many types of foam, there's only so many types of warbler, there's only so many things you can do with those. And even though they have real world applications, like they're very on trend in cosplay. So there is a huge amount of tutorials and guides as to how to use them in cosplay, which also makes it super duper user friendly. Whereas for sewing, there's a lot of guides on how to get started in cosplay, basics of cosplay sewing, all of that. There's even like books and stuff about it. But if you want to learn something more technical than using basic materials or basic techniques, you then have to look into specifics of actual sewing. So if you want to make a three piece suit, you look into tailoring. If you want to learn how to make a corset, you look into corsetry. There's different aspects to sewing that branch off that are more than just cosplay. I'm really struggling with this one because like, I, I, I do agree, like at its core, I think sometimes audiences look at things and they're like, wow, that's so cool. It's massive. How's it got through the door? That's gotta win. This is the little schoolgirl that's like exquisitely tailored. But I don't necessarily think that it's fair to judge and say, oh, well, working with foam or warbler is so easy versus sewing is so hard. Because making something with foam, you can still put a lot of hours into that, depending on how you sand it, how you prime it, how you paint it, how you airbrush it, how you seal it, how you attach it. There's a lot of different things that also go into that, that take time and research and effort. And you can sew something pretty easy not gonna lie, you can sew a lot of things together and make them look semi-legit even if they're falling apart on the inside. So it's like, neither of them is more difficult than the other. It's more about how you use them. <laughs> okay. Just because you spend hundreds of hours doing something, for example, hand embroidery, the result is not automatically beautiful. I've been irked in the past by comments such as, but they spend so many hours on this. Yeah, sure. The amount of work is amazing and I praise them for that, but sometimes it just doesn't look good. I feel horrible saying that, but as a judge, I feel it's important because we judge the result, not the time it took. I agree with this. I firmly agree with this. I have gotten into arguments with people about this before. <laughs> People will advertise that they're working on something and sometimes they will put like a timestamp and they will say 400 hours spent, 450 hours spent, 600 hours spent. But if you've got the proportions wrong, it doesn't matter how long you embroider it if it looks wrong. It can't just be me who sees that. It feels like I'm taking crazy pills. This weird culture around timestamping, like I don't know when it started. Personally, I'm not really a fan of it. I think like if you spend a hundred hours on something, that's cool, that's up to you. I'm not gonna shame anyone for how long they take making stuff. It's been a year and I've made nothing. <laughs> when you enter a contest, it's not based on who put the most effort in because like everyone around you has put effort in. It's not fair to judge on effort. You judge based on the result and the result only. Think of all the time it takes to explain, oh, I spent six months on this, I spent two weeks on this, I spent the da 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 da. Take that time and spend it explaining how you made it, not how long it took you. Photographers need to work at being more inclusive. Having a gallery full of only skinny white women will make many BIPOC and plus size cosplayers feel uncomfortable about approaching you. You can't just say you're inclusive, you have to put those words into action. This extends to videographers and those organising groups too, but I've noticed it especially with photographers. Um, I mean, I don't think this is unpopular by any means. I think most people who are not part of the skinny white girl demographic are going to agree with this. I don't think you can ever really be like too inclusive, especially in cosplay, like whether that is like organising groups or taking photos or like planning stuff with friends, like there's no reason to exclude anyone. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Because like, there are some photographers that I have worked with. I wouldn't say worked with. Some photographers who have taken my photo at events where I've looked weeks later and they've posted the ones of my friend, Solo, but there are no photos of me to be seen. One photographer actually took a photo that had the back of my head in it, posted that one. Oh, that's a compliment. There was a music video I was part of a few years ago. You had to queue up to be part of this video. And I saw at least two other entries before me getting recorded. And I was like, cool. And I was thinking through in my head, I was like, right, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. I can use this prop, I can do this and that and whatever. And when it came to my turn, have you got anything in mind? And I was like, yeah, I've got this in mind. And they were like, okay, cool. Um, if you can just stand and we'll pan around you and then we'll see how that looks. Okay, cool, we've got the shot. Right, we're happy with that. Jog on. What? 
That still bothers me now. It's bothered me for a long time. I just wish I'd been given as much of an opportunity as the other people in the queue had been because it was such an obvious, okay, we'll get you done, we'll move on. Whereas other people were given repeat takes, they were given much longer pans, they were given much longer attention. And I'm just like, it, it's just a sour taste, you know? <laughs> I feel like you could all be making more money, if that's what you want of course, by working with brands. Where are these brands you speak of? I mean this in the nicest possible way, like the person who wrote this is not a cosplayer, they are part of like the industry so they are aware of cosplayers and they're straight up cool dude. But as a cosplayer, where are these companies? Where are these brands that are gonna endorse every single cosplayer who ever drops into their mailbox? The amount of cosplayers who push their content onto social media and they tag this person, that person, and this brand, and this company, and all of this sort of stuff, and they get like nothing back. If it was so easy to work with brands, cosplayers would be doing it. Some brands this year have been really good with that, so things like Assassin's Creed, they've had a lot of cosplayer endorsement, they've retweeted and promoted cosplayers, they've had cosplayers like as official parts of campaigns, which is awesome. Things like Cyberpunk, they recently ran a competition which was for cosplayers and was all about promoting the game, that's cool. But things like that are super few and far between. Many, many times when I've guested at events, I've paid for my own hotel, my own travel, my own food, so the idea of getting comped for any of that and better yet, being promoted by a brand and recommended by a brand and being the face of a brand. Good luck with that one. Cosplay bullying is like high school drama. People need to grow up. I mean, unfortunately yes. It's one of those things where the older I get the more I realise that like the people who are involved in the cosplay drama are all like 10 years younger than me. There are some people within cosplay drama who just want to kick off at you because they get attention from it and they like to get a rise out of you, the same as bullies do. So it's like, well, if you ignore them, if you just crack on and do your own thing, can't say anything against you. If you're going to an event and someone's made a threat against you or if they spoke out against you or if they said, oh, I'm going to do this to you if you come however close to me, just make people aware of that. Like, keep friends around you, make sure that you're not alone at any point and just rise above it. To anyone watching who does get a kick out of that, who does enjoy watching other people suffer, who likes talking other people down, who likes diminishing other people's victories, just... just stop. Okay, so the next two, they're kind of similar, so I'm gonna lump them together. One's just kind of like a summary of the other one, but I really want to read this in its entirety, so just, just bear with me. Ever since cosplay became interesting to people outside of it, there has been a push to please the basic needs of heterosexual guys. Individuals like Jessica Negri quickly rose to fame, which in turn has stirred a new generation of cosplayers to start Cosplayers as Sex Work Business, which has altered the definition of cosplay and the cosplay scene. Calling Sex Work Cosplay has a direct effect on the perception of a whole community and even worse, an indirect effect on young and vulnerable members of said community. Reacting to this by blaming the ones speaking out for it as shaming is a simple way to shut down a long overdue conversation on how we want to define ourselves and how we can create a safe space for the members in our community. And the shorter submission, there is a difference between boudoir cosplay and non-boudoir cosplay and it shouldn't be considered gatekeeping or negativity to say so. Yeah. This has bothered me for a long time. It has always really bothered me. I've been cosplaying for 15 years and it's always been a bit of an issue. I remember in like early 2010s where people would be like, oh cosplay, is that a weird thing? No, it's not a weird thing. There have been multiple occasions where I've met new people and they're like, oh what are you into? And I'm like, yeah yeah I do cosplay. And they're like, oh cool, have you got any photos? And I show them what I've got and they're like, oh it's a bit more covered than I thought. Oh is it? <sighs> I think even if cosplayers like Jessica Negri hadn't like rose to fame the way that she had, someone else would have taken her place. It would have happened eventually. It's just the natural order of stuff. Like you're dealing with something where it deals with fantasy. Personally to avoid this I now say that I do costuming because it's close enough to cosplay but people don't necessarily instantly think oh yeah it's a weird <laughs> thing because it's more about like the craft and the making and all of that. It's unfortunate that I have to kind of like censor what it is that I'm saying because of the way that people perceive it. A lot of younger cosplayers that I've seen who have gotten started in like the past two three years they felt pressured to start a Patreon account and to start doing lewd work and I'm like who is making you feel like that? 
if you like making things and you like content, you shouldn't be pressured into making something that you're not comfortable with. And you also shouldn't be pressured into making an account where you take your clothes off because that's what the people want. Because I'm sure there's maybe like one or two people out there who want that from me and I ain't doing it. It ain't happening. Sorry. I'm not here to shame anyone. I'm not saying that anyone's wrong for doing anything. It's more that if you want to make a certain type of content, that is up to you. If you're feeling pressured into making a certain type of content, you do not have to do it. As much as I wish there was more of a distinction between cosplay <coughs> work and cosplay, at the minute there isn't. There's kind of like a weird blurred line between the two of them. As long as you're nice to each other, don't shame people for what they're doing. If they enjoy what they're doing, if you enjoy what you're doing, if you're not hurting anyone in the process, just crack on. And finally, Learning to market yourself and your work well on social media plays a far bigger role in being a successful cosplayer than actual talent. <laughs> oh my god, yes. The amount of times I've seen costumes go viral and I've looked at them in a bit closer detail and it's like, oh, well, that's obviously photoshopped. Oh, and that is visible sticky tape. Oh, and that isn't... is that a raw edge? Yeah, there's a lot of things like that. Sometimes it does feel unfair, but it's like... If you really put the effort in and you promote yourself as best as you can, you're going to get recognition too. That's it for now. Thank you everyone who submitted your cosplay hot takes. Some of the hot takes I covered in these videos are things that ordinarily I probably wouldn't speak on, so at the very least I hope you found them entertaining, interesting, insightful. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps. And if you've got any thoughts, leave them in the comments below. If you like what you see and you'd like to join me for even more cosplay chatter, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. I hope wherever you are in the world you have a wonderful winter break, stay safe, and I will see you very very soon.